Hi, this is Sherry Lee, and you're watching Picasbert. <laughs> Everybody, it's P. Cuspert. I've been waiting to do this list for quite some time now. Every time I've written this script, I've hated how they've come out. So let's see if I can change that. The rules for this list is that they have to have three or more games in the franchise. So I sadly can't put Okami or Legend of the Dark Witch on the list. Anyways, let's get this list started! Time for a franchise I've recently gotten into. The Fire Emblem franchise has always intrigued me. The only thing stopping me was my permadeath fears and how I'm not that big of a fan of strategy RPGs. But after I got into the game with Fates and Sacred Stones, I was hooked. The Fire Emblem franchise has become a big name for Nintendo as of recently, with Awakening giving the franchise a large amount of attention and it being well deserved. And why I was originally against the permadeath feature, it actually helps improve your skill as a player and test your strategies and your strength and mind. My favorites of this franchise are Sacred Stones, Fates, and Awakening. And I can't wait for Echoes to release, even it, though it's a remake of the Famicom game. But who really cares about that? This one just barely qualifies. Icarus was originally an NES game forgotten in time, then I got a Game Boy game which would later be forgotten by the franchise itself. But 25 years after Kid Icarus first released, we got Kid Icarus Uprising. This game is one of the best games on the 3DS. Palutena and Pit gain character traits, making them more interesting, as you get a pretty fun third person adventure game. Plus, Uprising makes characters who are extremely fun, like I just said. The villains, Hades, is probably the, the funniest villains if you don't count the characters from a franchise that are also on this list. Plus, Viridi is an interesting anti-hero along with Patu or Dark Pit as he prefers. Hopefully, we don't have to wait another 25 years for another game in the series. I've got my eye on you, Nintendo. Mega Man, the forgotten legend, and when someone new tried to bring up interest, it failed miserably. I don't know. Great idea. Wait, what? But as a franchise, Mega Man was a pretty good franchise with the main series, Star Force and Legends having their merits, and the less we say about Battle Network, the better, but the Mega Man franchise will always be known as the series that perfected the platformer. And also as the series to release too many damn games, causing it, causing an effect that would lead people to not care about Mega Man anymore, and causing them to stop making games at the wrong time. So that's fun. The, these games actually helped perfect the platforming formula, and have excellent platforming no matter what kind of formula they use for it. My favorites are Mega Man 10, X4, Zero 03, and ZX. Please, Capcom, I don't think the Legacy Collection sold well, but please bring him back! This is all I have! Limited release! Max output! Shantae's franchise has a small bit of identity crisis. Originally, it was a large Game Boy Color game with dungeons and transformations, then almost a decade later, they released a shorter version of that, and then we got a really big game, and then to what feels like Mega Man. Either way, Shantae has always been an interesting platformer slash Metroidvania franchise, with new stuff in every installment, keeping the games fresh. My favorites are Pirates of Curse and Half Genie Hero. The latter may be more like a Mega Man game than a Metroidvania game, but it has a certain magic to it that Mighty Number no. 9 lacks. Wait, what? Like, you know, good gameplay. But, you know, that's a video for another day. This is all I have! Limited release! Max beam output! 
Oh boy, murder and psychopathic eating disorders in a puffball! Brought to you by Game Theory. But in all seriousness, the Kirby franchise is very similar to Precure in a sense. Safe, most of the time always great, and bad as hell. The Kirby franchise is very simple in design and structure, but the game always introduces something interesting and fun, such as the mixing of powers in Crystal Shards and Squeak Squad, the yarn motif in Kirby's Epic Yarn, and the super copy abilities in Return to Dreamland. I love how fun these games can be, and it constantly has new abilities to use, meaning new ways to play. My favorites are Amazing Mirror, Triple Deluxe, and Planet Robobot. These three introduced incredibly interesting gameplay elements, making them much more fun to play than the others, in my opinion. Pokemon is the franchise that just keeps on giving. This franchise, along with some later entries on the list, are some of Nintendo's big hitters, with this latest installment being no exception. Pokemon always had a nice sense of adventure, with the games originally not being incredibly focused on story, developing with being able to coexist with a great story. I SAID GREAT! That's better. The main gameplay always added some great moments to the game. Mega Evolution, Double Battles, Breeding- OH MY GOSH! These games have some great moments. My favorites are Gen 7, Gen 6, and Gen 3. I honestly love Pokemon to death, and putting it at only number 5 is killing me! I just like what the other games do more. Insert something about how Nintendo killed the franchise or whatever. Ha <laughs> ha! Original comment. I am original. Hilarious and original. But in all seriousness, while Metroid may not be as popular as Nintendo's other franchises, it is certainly just as fun. Metroid revolves around Samus Aran, a loner who can be emotional but is also a bad- Nyeh. All of these games, she is fighting off aliens for peace and to make sure what happened on her planet doesn't happen anywhere else. Her games are also fun as hell, and you're all alone on these giant planets, uh... For the most part. My favorites are Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, and Metroid Other M. Nyeh. Oh! Nyeh. Cue the piano music. Mario, Jumpman Mario. My oh my, you have been part of some of the most important games in the history of the industry. Your games are not only fun, but they are legendary. These games have been able to stand the test of time as some incredibly fun games on such a very almost childish platform. Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario World, Super Mario Brothers 3, new ways to play, the level design, the level design is beautiful, the design, the care each and every game seems to have, except for Super Mario Galaxy 2, that, what the, what the hell were you thinking? Either way, Sonic ain't got nothing on you, there's a reason you're the king. Thank you for listening to my letter to Mario. Okay, enough of the sappy Dear John music. Cue the silly music! <laughs> Hybrid Dimension Neptunia is a fairly recent franchise, first appearing with less than stellar results in 2010, but I have grown to being one of the best franchises on the PlayStation consoles. These games are based entirely off of video games. The first game is based off the console war, the second one against the fight against piracy, the third game is gaming since the beginning and activist groups against video games, and the fourth game is the death of the Dreamcast. All these characters are just fun and incredibly amazing, but I made an entire list for them. These characters are just so fun and enjoyable, they just make life better. They're so much fun and I love them. Sure, it's incredibly moe, but it mocks how incredibly moe it is. The fourth wall breaking is great. Oh, I love these games! Hmm. Okay, let's calm down and get into some honorable mentions, shall we? 
Hey guys, it's Baron from the Toku Legacy. So I hope you subscribe to my channel to see 24 Reasons Tokusatsu, where I compare some Tokusatsu series. And uh, I'm here to explain my two favorite video games, uh, Pac-Man and Minecraft. So the reason I love Pac-Man so much because it's a cl much classic video game. Uh, you you uh, guide Pac-Man to eat the dots. You have to avoid the goats, and if you want to defeat the ghosts, then you have to eat the power pellet and uh, eat some of the ghosts. It's very fun, uh, very hard. It's a challenging game, and like I said, classic. My other favorite video game is Minecraft. It is a very creative game. You can build anything as long as they have it. Uh, you have to be careful of the zombies, creepers, and endermans. And yeah, it's a very creative game. Uh, I can build something out of it. And yeah, these are so Pac-Man and Minecraft are my favorite games. Okay, what am I here? What? Top 10 favorite video game franchises. And I'm a guest throwing in my honorable mention. Okay, I can do that. My favorite video game franchise would most likely be the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Yep, I'm a fan of the Blue Blues games. Well, the majority of them. I was born to the series when I was young. I remember playing Sonic Heroes on the PlayStation 2. And writing that rising lava section in Team Doc's story. <laughs> I'm going off topic. I just like how the gameplay feels. It's kind of fun redoing levels, finding new pathways and shortcuts, and feeling satisfied when you beat your previous record. Not only that, but the music is really good. Sure, the games have been a bit lacking the standard from 2005, but over the past few years, the franchise has had some really good games such as Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations. And well, with the time this video comes out, Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces haven't really been released yet, but oh my god, do they look really promising. Now then, back to you, Picasso, because I don't want to be here when people get mad at me. Thanks, Nebby. This is all I have! Limited release! Max beam output! Was there ever any doubt? What more can be said about this beautiful franchise? These games have been in the hearts of many, almost rivaling Mario's popularity. This series features great characters, incredibly interesting stories to those characters, and puzzles making it feel like a legitimate legend. The games that excel in all of these are Breath of the Wild, Majora's Mask, and above it all, Wind Waker at the top of the peak. These games deserve the name of Legends. All of these games show signs of excellent storytelling, excellent art design, the graphics, even though some of them don't look the best nowadays, they're still really good for their time, and they help to explain their story through their gameplay for the most part, especially in Link to the Past. The Zelda franchise is the only franchise that truly lives as a legend. I'm P. Cusford, and The Legend of Zelda is my favorite video game franchise, as if you couldn't tell from last month.